Hello ladies and gentlemen, um, my name is Jason Burns and I'm giving a public lecture and uh, this public lecture is open for dialogue, discussion and debate. And it's for everybody out there who is interested in democracy. This lecture uh, took six months to research and took a lot of critical reflection and thinking and so this lecture is not to be taken trivially and I would ask the general public to respect the contents of this lecture. I would ask those who are public policy makers in government departments around the world to take seriously what I'm about to say and to discuss uh, amongst yourselves the issues that are going to play out within the lecture. The lecture is entitled Democracy, Public Space and Preaching. We begin the lecture. The privatization of public space without due consideration to our democratic rights is a national disgrace, a disgrace that America, the European Union and global community share. The failure to provide clear guidance how our democratic rights relate to public-private ownership space reveals a systematic failure of our political leadership both in local government and national government and international affairs. There needs to be urgent corrective where private enterprise has taken control, control of public space. The democratic rights of the local people should be returned. A new creative vision needs to be applied to public space when it is returned. That vision should work with private enterprise as it does bring economic benefits to local people. But private enterprise should work alongside democratic rights. Local government has to have a two-way plan. That plan should be to encourage business to partner with public bodies in the area of public space so that city town centres are helped to develop economically. But also to see that's only part of the picture, but to protect democratic rights of that land and to encourage all communities to take ownership of that land in the exercise of their democratic rights. Those rights being free speech, the right to assemble and religious conscience. When public space is returned, there needs to be a return to a classical view of democracy advocated by John Stuart Mill in his book Liberty. The democracy we see operating in the UK, Europe and America is a parody of democracy. It is a shallow democracy, inconsistent with itself, dogmatic, partisan and will lead down for democracy if not urgently challenged. This shallow democracy is one that will police. This shallow democracy is the one that will police this public space, and it is not fit to do so. We need a more robust and fair interpretation of our democratic documents, and John Stuart Mill can help us. All those who love and believe in democracy must stand together as one, and fight all anti-democratic forces to return public space back to the people. It is the greatest battle we have to face since the Second World War. Next, confrontation and humiliation. I regard Middleton Town Council and Middleton Town Centre Management Company, also Middleton Police, as excellent bodies who do good work, but failed in many areas to protect democracy. How I came to these conclusions was over a period of two weeks. I have never been interested in politics, only voting once, and I have never been in political agitation. I am at heart an all-time gospel preacher of the mode of John Wesley and George Whitfield, more interested in saving souls than political activism. But when I was stopped from preaching in my local town centre, Middleton Town Gardens, on the grounds that the public land had been put in contract with private companies, I was shocked. Shocked that the police, the council and the company all failed to, con failed to conform to inform me of my democratic rights and fail to see the democratic rights of Middleton people have been taken away. 
I was also shocked about myself that I did not understand my democratic rights. Also, except for the police as they were impeccable, the company and the council made me feel I was not value, valued as a Christian and preacher. I felt duly humiliated. Next, ask not what the human right can do for you, but what you can do for the Human Rights Act. The Human Rights Act provides us all with certain freedoms in Europe. It provides us with the freedom of thought, the freedom of religious conscience, and to express those beliefs, and finally the freedom to assemble. The intellectual, artistic, religious and political freedoms of the people are assured. The Act is a good basis for democratic society. Yet my local officials fail to see the privatisation of Middleton Town Centre as taken away the peoples of Middleton's freedom. The problem is more compounded as the UK people show apathy towards these rights. Many feel the Human Rights Act is the meddling antics of Europe. Then you have the media who constantly snipe at the rights, reporting stories like the one about the prisoner who wanted his rights to porn magazines. Public bodies are no better choosing to implement some rights of the Act, but lamentably failing to inform communities about these rights. What's more, they often fail to have ongoing training for the staff in the application and value of the Act. Then the Human Rights Act is constantly abused by people who apply it only selfishly. They fail to see, as Bernard Shaw said, with every right is a responsibility. Finally, you have the politicians. Some pat themselves on the back, feeling all is well as we have these rights. They are full of presumption that democracy will always be. They have a collective amnesia as to the reasons why her sister act in Europe of 1948 came into being. That reason was never, never would Europe fall under tyranny again. Then you have the politicians who get ejaculation when the words Bill of Rights is muted. You have to walk before you can run. If the UK people cannot get excited in a document that treats all people with love and dignity, then they do not deserve a Bill of Rights. Bill of Rights politicians need to stop taking their Viagra of nationalism and get behind defending the Human Rights Act. In fact, all of us in the UK need to see it as a national emergency to defend the Human Rights Act and to apply it for the use of all our citizens and communities. It must be applied fairly. We all need to Stop thinking my rights, but think our rights, their rights. The judiciary sees the problem of responsibility, but it needs to help in a national education program and judicial practice, which encourage a more community responsible application of human rights. Next, public space and town management companies. Just to decide, those who are in America, just bear with this because this will have a direct application to you in a second. <coughs> this leads on to the problem of town management companies. First, I would like to say that they do not wish to take away the rights of business. These management companies have brought economic life to our cities and town centres. However, that they give in economic however, what they give in economic renewal, they take away in democratic rights. The Middleton Town Centre, Town Centre Management Company is a partnership with local councils and companies. They have a strategy to renew Middleton Town Centre. So far, they have done a good job in bringing economic and social benefits to the Middleton people. But the space is no, no longer the people's. If they want to use the land, they have to pay. If they pay, they have to insure. They have to have insurance liability, and are subject to the company's rules. The company have commercialised what they say as key parts of the what they say as key parts of the town centre, just Middleton Town Gardens. Can the Middleton people now exercise the democratic freedoms on that land now? No, they cannot. In Swinton Town Centre, we see how this works. The Salvation Army wanted to play music and give out leaflets in the town centre. The town management company said yes, but, but, but put restrictions. They could give out leaflets but not talk to people. Is this really a democratic society that would put such restrictions and violate our democratic rights? Then the Salvation Army were told they were limited as to when they could have access to the town centre. 
But what if it was a 